Welcome to this episode of The People Dividend with Mike Horn. I am absolutely delighted to have in our virtual studio today, Suhe Piedra. Uh, she is an enrolled agent and that everyone who has ever done taxes or many people who have ever done taxes know that enrolled agent means something about money and taxes and the IRS. And Suhe will tell us more about that. But she is an enrolled agent. She has a 20 plus year uh, career as a certified tax preparer. And she likes to make her clients money work for them so that they don't have to work forever. And I wonder, as I think about all of our audience and uh, those who are listening, I welcome those who are new, uh, those who are returning, if you have that goal of not working forever. In her daily work as co-founder of Prominence Business and Wealth Management, Suhe supports high-earning, service-based business owners achieve long-term wealth through a holistic approach to financial services, providing bookkeeping, tax preparation, financial planning, and tax strategy under one roof. And get this, everyone. Together with her two sisters, who are co-founders of the business, Suhe runs the business, also hosts and produces Tax Talk with Hey Hey Podcast, where they provide insights into business taxes, wealth building, and what it means to really create financial freedom. Besides her own show, Suhe has been featured on Sell Without Selling. When she's not helping service-based business owners to grow their own income, Suhe enjoys traveling, horseback riding, and working on her oath, her own growth mindset. Uh, so welcome, Suhe. Do you want to say a few words about yourself to our audience, please? <laughs> well, thank you, Mike. Thank you for that introduction. It is lengthy. Um, but I want to say I am a different type of a tax preparer. I am not going to be that boring person. I really believe that we can pump life into our finances, into our numbers and make them more fun and entertaining versus daunting and scary and something we don't want to face. And when we say the word taxes, we fear them. We fear the IRS. And I'm here to tell you, it's really shouldn't be that way. There are other ways to look at them. Um, I'm a mom of two um, adults now, I guess. My daughter will be turning 18. My youngest daughter will be turning 18 next week. Well, congratulations. So That's an accomplishment. <laughs> That's <laughs> what I say. I'm like, okay, you guys are 18 and over now. So, uh, you know, uh, I did my job here. <laughs> right. But, uh, but yeah, other than that, I mean, um, the business was started with uh, two of my sisters, but we are five girls. And, um, you know, my parents are very humble, you know, brought us up in a very humble upbringing. Uh, but they are, you know, immigrants from Mexico and the language barrier made it really difficult for us to really, you know, understand a lot of financial stuff. Me being the oldest, I had to learn how to balance their checkbook, help them pay bills, help them run a lot of the household stuff really early on. I must have been like 12 or 13. Um, and so it became natural for me to just be able to know a little bit about everything. And taxes were just something that I really loved uh, learning more about. But as I grew in my career, I realized that it didn't matter if you knew the language or if you were from, you know, born and raised in this country or not. No matter where you come from, at the end of the day, we all seem to fear taxes. And I thought it was just my parents because they were immigrants. And in reality, that's not true. Everyone is um, has this thing that they don't like taxes. And so I wanted to really change that belief. I really wanted us to really look at the numbers because they're telling a story and we're not listening. And I, I agree with you. Uh, there is, seems to be an innate fear of uh, taxes. Isn't there some expression about people fear ta uh, death, death and taxes the most? In public speaking, I think. I think something about that. You probably right. know that better than I. Where, where, what part of Mexico were your parents from? Um, I, the Michoacan. So um, oh, sure. I've been, okay. Uh, it's one of those things where my parents never really took us back, even though they did. But my dad said he wanted us to always have a better life. And so, you know, uh, we really don't um, know much about where they, you know, their where they really um, grew up. We mm -hmm. hear stories 
Um, but my dad really believed that he wanted us to have a better upbringing out here. And he did a great job. I mean, work ethic, all of us work really hard. Um, the three of us, you know, started this business and the, the two younger ones, uh, one of them's a registered nurse and the other one is a therapist. And so we've been very good about going to school, you know, getting our stuff done and having a very, you know, a good career to, to live off of. So. Well, that's great. And uh, what you're trying to help people with in terms of getting out of this fear um, is so great. The fear around uh, taxes. So as you think about this, I mean, why is, how can you transform your tax strategy into a catalyst for growth? Well, when I, when I said we really have to start by looking at them and reviewing them, right? Um, lately I've, I've been telling clients, look, we plan a wedding, we plan a camping trip, we plan our vacations. Why? Because we want to control some of that outcome, right? Yes, maybe it rains on our wedding day. It's beyond our control, right? But the majority of the stuff, we know what they're going to serve. We know what the colors are. We know that if we're going to go camping, we have to take, you know, a tent and certain tools, right? So when we ignore our taxes or we literally wait till the last minute and just submit whatever, um, we don't control it. Whatever the computer spits out or whatever our tax preparer says we owe or are getting a refund, we keep com- we keep making the same mistakes or there's no improvement year after year. And so I really believe that it's because we're just ignoring them. We're not really taking a closer look. But again, who's telling us that we should? Uh, we don't learn about taxes in school. Maybe you took one class, you know, in economics or financial planning of some sort, but it's very, very basic. Other than that, no one really teaches us about taxes or how to look at them and our finances. So overall, we all fear looking at creating budgets or creating, um, you know, looking at where's our money really going. And so I'm here to tell you, it shouldn't be that way. If we want to control the outcome, then we have to plan. We have to be more proactive. And so if you want to turn your finances around and start creating really real wealth, people say, well, you start to budget, right? You start to pay off debt and all that. But I think right. that budget, budget and debt have like this ugly taste to it, right? <laughs> so again, it goes back to those ugly emotions that are tied to these words. And for me, it's like, no, go make more money, right? Go get more money so we can buy assets that continue to grow assets and that continue to grow wealth for us to create generational wealth or have a better retirement, something along those lines, whatever your goals are, let's just make sure that your finances are lined up to meet and match those goals. That's so wonderful. And certainly uh, a service and an approach and an attitude uh, from which everyone could benefit. One of the things that you help uh, people to do is you help them to wealth build with real estate. Um, so even if you're not already rolling in a lot of money, a lot of dough, what's mm-hmm. what are your approaches around that, around wealth building with real estate? So what brought that on was honestly the, the same concept of, you know, when you meet with clients in and out, day in, you know, day in and day out uh, during tax season, you realize that uh, most of us will have this, the dread feeling, right? And then a lot of the times when I'm reviewing the return with them, the comments that were made was, wow, I didn't know I made that much. Where did it go? Um, and so I'm like, this is because no one's paying attention to the numbers, right? So I had to slow down, really create a consultation where we get to review those things. But one thing that started to stand out was that even though a lot of the common words were the same, was that it didn't really matter how much money you made. What mattered is what you did with your money. And Mm. one of the most common stories I share is I have a couple that marries a professional and another professional. So they're a half a million dollar couple living paycheck to paycheck. And you think, I always believed that the more money I make, the more money I was going to have and the better life I was going to have. But what ends up happening is we just increase our expenses, increase our lifestyle. Our mortgage is still very high or higher. Our tastes become higher and therefore we still live paycheck to paycheck. 
So we never got rid of the stress. You know what I mean? It's just bigger numbers to deal with. Right. And then I get a client that comes in, you know, I you know, always say he's my little custodian comes in and he makes $70,000 a year of working for the public school district and he has 12 rentals. And I'm like, how, how is it that you're doing this? So the first thing he tells me, he says, read Rich Dad, Poor Dad. Uh huh. And so I read the book by Robert Kiyosaki and I became obsessed. I became obsessed with him. His CPA at the time was Tom Wilwright. And it just started to lead me to other professionals that um, were teaching about tax-free wealth and how to keep more of your money. And so I found myself with the responsibility of being the one to learn all this and really consume it so that I could teach it to my clients and educate them and show them that there is a better way. So in that book, Rich Dad, Poor Dad, it, he is very real estate, um, you know, uh, driven right. in that book. Well, when my client walks in with 12 rentals and he's doing it and he's only making 70,000, well, I'm like, well, I want to do it. How do I do it? And so I started to really um, peel layer, layer by layer and really starting to play in the game. And so what I did is I started to gather, I saw the power I had, which was I had access to a lot of tools. And so what I did is I started looking at all my clients that had rental properties in different states. And I started asking them, who manages your properties? Can you send me their contact? Can you make a referral? And so before you know it, I have a database of really good resources that allow us to own properties in different parts of the country. And so my first property cost me $70,000 and the down payment was $17,000. And so I was like, anybody can really save 17,000 versus a hundred or 200 to buy a house here in California, right? And so it was one of those things that it became something where I wanted to teach others that if you maybe get a bonus at work or if you get a refund or if you save a little bit that you could acquire your first real estate property and an out of state make it, and it cash flows. And now you have an asset that continues to give you money. So it became something that all of a sudden a lot of clients became attracted to because they never thought that they could do it. And all of a sudden it became very doable. So that's, 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 really, got that's really wonderful. And why prominence? Uh, how does that figure into you know, uh, prominencebusiness.com. Why the word prominence? What does that mean? What does that take on? Well, when we thought of um, starting the business, I mean, we were working in corporate America. I, you know, I was working for Morgan Stanley, had a very good, you know, future there. And I had worked for previous CPAs in the past. So, Making money was having a good career was very easy with my background. It was something that I wanted, but I couldn't control how I spoke to clients. I couldn't help them beyond what my duties were in that position. And so I really wanted to go above and beyond. And my sisters, my sisters have the same spirit. We wanted to help, really wanted to make a difference. And so um, crew, my sister Cruz, she's like, what about being prominent? You know, being something where we can take clients to a different level and really make that difference. And so we came up with prominence business and our logo, everything has meaning behind our mission, which is to really carve out, help clients create that path that is, uh, you know, clear and concise to what their goals are. At the end of the day, whether you make changes to your finances or you don't, it doesn't benefit me, it benefits you. And um, the clients that we've had since the beginning have really seen the difference, have really noticed that just because they don't fear it anymore, they really have an understanding that they get to control it. And that has made a difference. So my returning clients are always looking forward to our appointments because it's not about dreading how much I'm going to owe. It's not about dreading any of it. They already know we've been in touch with them. They have us to call in case anything comes up. And so our, I mean, we are really living a really good, we feel good about what we're doing. We feel we're living that dream, that passion that we have. And it makes it a lot easier because it doesn't feel like we're going to work every day. <laughs> yeah, that is a good way to uh, consider it. 
You know, I often think people set so many New Year's resolutions and they typically revolve around, um, uh, you know, emotional health. I'll be kinder to people. I'll be more gentle. I'll be more assertive. Uh, certainly people make lots of commitments around physical health. I'll go to the gym more often. I'll make sure I, you know, take a walk or have a run every day. Uh, and people will also make commitments to their intellectual health. I'll read more books. I'll get this degree. I'll do this course. And often that other bubble is financial health. I mean, that's what rounds us out, right? Emotional health, physical health, intellectual health, and then financial well-being is a way of taking care of yourself about surviving, not only taking care of yourself, but, you know, creating the legacy for your children, for those who are important to you. And why do you think people don't set so many goals around financial well-being and financial health, uh, even though it's, you know, one of the, uh, at least for me, one of the key quadrants in life? Right. And I think it's that it's that fear. We don't want to face it, right? Fear. So, I mean, I, I, like I said, I, I heard a few of your podcasts and you talk about mindset. And I think it has to do with that, right? We have a lot of limiting beliefs around our finances. So when it starts with, our health. And at least for me, right? When I first started to, when I opened up the business, I noticed that I needed to have a clear mind, um, more organization, uh, that I needed to continue to not just motivate people, but really inspire them to, to, to make these changes. And so it started with me though. And I needed to get in a better, in a better mindset. I needed to make sure that their negativity, because not everything is easy and it doesn't work out overnight. It's a, it's a process. And just like a diet, you can go to the gym today. It doesn't mean tomorrow you'll be, you know, 50 pounds lighter. So it's a process and it, and it's not just about going to the gym, right? You have to change your diet. Your energy just starts to change. All this starts to change. And it's the same thing with our finances. A lot of the times we believe that we, sh- you know, we can't afford a financial advisor because we don't have that kind of money. And so we kind of shut that door. And I, I honestly believe that in the tax industry, it's broken, right? And so the tax preparers that are out there are in the, in the, in the position of just preparing a return for you and not really giving any guidance. They don't assume that responsibility because they're only tax preparers. So you really need to find a tax planner, a financial planner, somebody that's really going to help you peel off the layers of what are those numbers saying about you? Where is there room for improvement? What can you change? You know, how long is it going to take and help create that path? Just like a diet, just like a gym, just like a trainer would for you and your body. It's the same thing for you and your finances. So it's a long it's not a long necessarily process, but it is a process. It's such a difference, right, between, and no disparage, I'm not disparaging Quicken or Intuit, but there yeah. is a real difference between going to uh, what I might describe as a tax preparer. I'm not questioning their service. It might be friendly, helpful, uh, right. technically right. And if I go to a tax advisor, if I go to an enrolled agent, if I go to my um, uh, yeah. a person who prefer, they might say, have you considered this investment strategy? Have you thought about this? Where are these savings going? It's a whole different uh, world that you enter into the thinking about abundance. Right. And to me, a lot of the clients will say, well, does uh, being an enrolled agent or a CPA or a tax, does that matter? And I'm like, no, to me, those are titles. You want to find the individual that is really going to take that extra step to take the time and make a difference in your tax return. So to me, titles don't matter. It's about that individual that's really going to care about you and your finances. And so those individuals are out there, but they're, you know, there's, there's a few of us in our community that take pride in, in, in that. What happens with our industry though is that in the tax world, it's volume based. This is why you mm-hmm. go in and out, right? You're, you, you tax season, they're pressuring us to have gazillions of tax returns done by April 15th. So what does that do? It cuts our appointments to 15 minutes. It cuts, maybe you just drop off your stuff and then you get a call a couple of days later saying your stuff is ready when you never met with no one to review those numbers. So what ends up happening is it's not necessarily just the professional's fault. It's really the industry itself. Remember, 
when we really look and start to control, we're taking from Uncle Sam, right? So this is why everyone promotes do your taxes yourself, because it's not that you can't do them. You're doing them right, probably. But is there room for improvement? And those are the things that you wouldn't know because you don't have the background in the financial world of what other tools are available. Or the IRS code is so complicated to read and you don't know what what credits you qualify for. So uh, that's where you need to find that individual that is going to take the time to help review those numbers with you. And I'm sure that's what you do, uh, Suhey, and your colleagues uh, in your business. I think, uh, you know, as I think about one of my uh, tax advisors uh, at one point, I believe he told me one season that basically he was using the same software as Quicken. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe there wasn't anything any better. And yet there was a whole different value add in that relationship, thinking about my goals, my family, uh, yes. again, different sorts of strategies, which I, I, I find um, not all that common. Yes. And it's people like you who make a difference, who can really make a difference, uh, as you described your beginnings, you know, coming from uh, parents with humble backgrounds. Uh, it's about making a real difference in a person's life um, that can happen. I mean, having sold a house in California last year, you know, I was shocked at the amount of taxes that were due. And thank goodness I had someone help me think through all of that. Right. And it just requires a little planning. And that's what I tell clients is, You want to have those professionals that you can dial up during the year and not after, because when it's after the year closes and Uncle Sam only is very limited in the tools that we have available. But if it's happening during or before you take action with anything, which is either selling a property or maybe retiring or job changing, or it doesn't really matter what it may be, even getting married, right? It's like if you sit down with a professional to really evaluate that, then you can have a better outcome. You will have a little bit more control. And I think that's, you know, that's really what it's all about. I like one of your points, which is that the lack of financial literacy is a problem for everyone, not just, you know, people who are marginalized, Mm -hmm. uh, less wealthy than others. I've observed this in my client base, for example. I think about, you know, a a, a tremendously wealthy executive uh, with whom I've worked, Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, off the charts kind of money, I believe. And uh, he said that he would often uh, talk to his administrative assistant, who was, you know, I'm sure making less than $100,000. I'll be generous, who is probably making less than $100,000 a year or maybe around that mark. And he, you know, would say, you know, that he had consistently given her advice about, you know, what to do if there's a stock split, what to do if there's this or what to do. And she was never really able to incorporate all of that. So while his wealth was growing exponentially, hers was limited to the paycheck again, right? It's making good money as an administrative assistant, you know, you're making a hundred thousand dollars a year. You're making very good money as an administrative assistant. You've got a key job, but never really thought beyond that paycheck. Right. And so it is this, it is a problem for everyone, isn't it? I, I mean, that's just one illustration. Yeah. It's something that I've noticed and it's a common, it's been common with whether you're self-employed, W2, make, you know, under a hundred or over a hundred, like I said, um, it's, but I really do believe it goes back again. Like I mentioned, it's our mindset, right? It's mm-hmm. our limiting beliefs. It's, um, it's the fact that when we think of budget, we think of cutting back. And I always mm-hmm. tell my clients, go make more money and then call me and we can figure out how we're going to control taxes. Right. Um, but I don't ever want to say, okay, you're making too much money. You shouldn't make too much because uncle Sam's taking all your money. It's like, no. There's so many tools out there that get unlocked depending on your, you know, how much money you make that, uh, you know, you just have to apply different tools, different strategies. Um, But it does require us to become, you know, not just educated because it's not about education. It's really about us changing our mindset and changing how we feel about our finances um, is, is really big because no matter, I'm here to tell you, no matter how much money you make now, and if you're going to be making more, those habits will transition. You're just making bigger numbers, but 
your habits will remain. You know, for example, I received, uh, you, you know, somebody, uh, W, uh, I'm sure it's an important tax document that was enclosed. <laughs> it's something, and I, and I, you know, looked at who it was from and I said, oh, I made money from these people this year. I didn't realize that. But, you know, thank goodness, you know, for people like you, uh, Suhei, who are uh, helping people and, um, you know, really thinking about how can I get to the point not that I don't care about my taxes, not that I don't care about making money, but how do I get to the point where I don't worry about it right. all the time? I take it off my worry list in some ways. Uh, because I've also observed uh, folks who, you know, tax season comes due and they are so consumed by worry and stress yeah. that they're really unable to focus on the better things in life. I mean, do you experience that as well or? For sure. I do. Um, a lot of the times, like I said, it's a dread, right? And it's because we, we didn't look at our paychecks throughout the year or at our W2s. We don't know what we actually made. And now we just feel like Uncle Sam's going to charge us more. Right. When we have clients that we work with and that are really proactive and learn tax planning, then what ends up happening is they've known all along what their return is going to look like. At the end, when the tax season arrives, it's just about filing a required form and that's it. They've already, they already know what it's going to look like. Um, but again, it, it, it requires a little bit of change. It requires us to, to be more proactive. But when you are proactive, you can control. And if there's a dreading bill, then ask, then let us know because be like, oh, did you know that you can do this? Or did you know that you can go do that? And that'll help keep more of that money in your pocket. Um, when we talk about strategy, my goal is if there's a tax savings, which 99% of the time, there's always a tax savings when you throw in a strategy, that's the point of strategies. Then I say, okay, well, now you're going to get an extra X amount. Let's not spend it. Let's go out and invest it into another asset that'll continue to give us cash flow or continue to give us more money. So that money is working for us and we're not just mm -hmm. working for money. I think that's where some of that dread comes in. It's so surprising uh, when, uh, whenever I've looked at numbers uh, about the number of people who contribute to savings programs with their employers, how few people take advantage of what's often some free money on the table. Um, oh, sure. or, or certainly, you know, it's that whole thing about compound interest and, you know, five cents today might be X in 20 years, whatever that amount is. And many people are so surprised. Oh, and they, you know, get to a certain point in life. And as you well know, we have so many generations in the workplace now. I mean, yes. five generations in the workplace now. Some people who are working into their uh, 70s, 80s, um, not because they want to. Right. But because they have to almost. Right. It's true. Um, and this is why I'm such a big promoter of acquiring assets. Assets that will yes. grow with inflation, that will keep up with inflation. Assets that will contribute that extra couple hundred dollars that you need a month, maybe to pay for a car payment or, you know, a, a prescription or something. And versus us being paycheck to paycheck and then saying, okay, I can't afford this or I don't have any more money to go towards that extra bill. It's about creating those assets that will continue to give year and after year. Prominencebusiness.com. Uh, you can find out more about Suhei Piedra and her team there. Uh, and I encourage everyone to visit. And I'm sure there are so many more nuggets that uh, underlie this. And I want to explore a concept, uh, Suhei, that you often uh, talk about is that busy work doesn't equal growth work. Can you break that <laughs> down for everyone in our listening audience? It's a great statement. Busy work doesn't equal gro growth work. Well, uh, again, most of us, and I mean, I, th that comment came from the heart because I thought that the longer I was at the office, the more successful I would be. And instead, what I was doing is my health was going to the toilets, right? It was just overwork, stress. And um, when my sister, Brisa, who is very organized and systematic, she's like, let me come in and just organize your desk and make things a little bit work more on a process, automations and all this other stuff. I had to learn to let go. And 
stop being so controlling because sometimes that's what it is, right? We're just so controlling. Yeah, well, we like, I, I like my tax advisor to be controlling. So don't, don't worry about that. <laughs> I just thought I could do it better, right? And so right. when it came to all of those things that needed just to be tweaked and modernized and created systems and yes. processes, clients became happier. I became yes. more productive and I get to yes. go home earlier in the day. And I'm like, right. I don't know how that is possible, but it definitely is. And um, the business just changed because now my clients look at me and they don't see me tired out. They look at me energized and now I can pass on the messages to them and teach them and tell them what difference it made for me. And maybe that's what they need because we definitely need to work, you know, on our businesses, not just in them. And so that they don't consume us. You're an unusual guest for the People Dividend <laughs> podcast and formerly Authentic Change with Mike Horn. Um, and part of the reason I was so interested in having you as a guest, not only your record of accomplishment and your mission and your vision to help others in the world, is because I don't think we talk enough about financial well-being and financial health. And you have such a great message about, you know, you don't need to fear this. Find a trusted advisor like uh, Suhe Piedra and her team uh, to to help you on this journey. We all need helpers in life. Yes, I would agree. And that it's really leads me to asking a question uh, about the Tax Talk with Hey Hey podcast. What's that all about? Because uh, I'd love, uh, you know, as we think about, I mean, this big picture we've talked about, about, you know, emotional health, intellectual health, physical health, financial health. It might be a great asset to our listeners. It was one of those things that we started to be able to really talk about spreading the message about tax strategy. But it started to change as we we opened it up to guests and it became more of a of the mindset of an entrepreneur. We started to notice again those common fears, those common things when we are growing a business, when we start off a business, when we are W2 employees and we're stuck in the rat race. And so it became this mindset thing where we started to share ways of overcoming that. We noticed that um, one of the common things was those that we have, our business coaches, our life coaches, uh, have more guidance and are able to get through certain problems a lot quicker than those that are struggling on their own. And then that led us to realize that those that have a team, whether you have, you know, your attorneys, your accountants, your, you know, financial planners, your coaches were so much more successful quicker and had a better life than those that don't. And it became one of these things to realize that, especially I talk a lot to the entrepreneur, you know, because I am one, but I, again, I used to work in the corporate world. So I know the W2 struggle but we always feel like we're alone. And mm. that is what the flavor it took is that we're not alone. We're all going through the same things and we just need to share the message on how we overcome our obstacles so that maybe someone else is, is the answer or the key that they've been looking for so that they can get through and make progress and make some you know meaningful changes. Now, so, um, the people dividend is, uh, is heard by listeners around the world. Um, and, you know, I want to focus on uh, folks who have taxes in the United States. Does someone have to show up in person to work with you or can you do it via Zoom or how does that work for uh, you and your firm and your clients? So it's definitely something that can be done via Zoom. Um, I'm federally licensed, so I do taxes across the U.S., uh, but I've got referral partners that dedicate themselves to working with foreign, you know, individuals, foreign entities. Mm -hmm. Um, but it's still the same concept. No matter where you are, taxes are pretty much all over the world, right? And so um, it's something that when you find those individuals, those professionals that will work with you, um, yes, you know, you'll notice, you'll feel that there's a difference and no matter how you communicate with them. So with me, and I do have clients that come in in person, but a lot of the majority of them will, it's a Zoom meeting where I get to share my screen, just like if you were sitting here in front of me. And we get to communicate and we get to show you, um, you know, what is all going on with uh, your taxes and your tax return and stuff like that. So Zoom is a blessing. <laughs> oh, that's so great. 
Uh, and it's wonderful for me to know that and for everyone in our uh, audience to know that as well. Taxes are complicated. You need to work with somebody. I don't care if you're making, you know, your first job and you're at $30,000 or $25,000. Just having that insight from a, a person such as you, uh, Suhe Piedra, would be, you know, helps you to start off on the right foot. Right. And I wouldn't say that they're just complicated, right? It has to do, you want someone to give you an outside perspective. And because I, I will get clients that say, I do my own taxes because they're so easy to do. I'm not arguing that filling out the forms with a software is not hard. It's easy. It could be easy for could a lot be, of yeah. people, right? But there's so one, many. One W9, that's it. But there's so many strategies and tools out there that you're not aware of. And that's where the professional needs to help you and guide you. You know, maybe that is uh, the way that I really think about all the value that you're adding. It's called, let's be strategic. Let's be strategic yeah. about our financial well-being. Uh, it's a really wonderful way to uh, consider it. And just as we begin to wrap up uh, this episode of The People Dividend, I'm wondering, um, if you were to provide one or two pieces of advice or guidance to everyone in our listening audience, given your background as a certified tax preparer, someone with 20 plus years of uh, experience and uh, who has the attitude that I want my clients to have uh, their money work for them, what are those you know, one or two pieces of sagacity of sage advice that you would offer? I mean, honestly, the first thing that came to mind is going to be, you know, stop fearing the IRS. They're not as bad as you think or we have been led to believe. The IRS is one of the most patient, uh, you know. They're slow as molasses themselves. That's what I've observed. (laughs) Right. Which, which again, adds to you can set up payment plans if you owe them. I mean, you can work with them. There's a lot of things, but we tend to push the blame on them because we fail to organize our own finances. And so that makes it a lot easier, right? But I'm here to tell you that if we just take a look and apply those strategies, anything and everything that is ordinary and necessary is legally okay for you to write off, right? But you have to be organized with your documentation. What is, you know, what is the, um, the meaning of that item for you. And I will always explain to clients that something that is deductible to you may not, may not necessarily be deductible to me because we run to two totally different businesses. So we have to stop comparing ourselves and say, well, my neighbor said I couldn't write off, you know, my earphones. I'm like, well, what is, if your neighbor doesn't need those earphones, then yeah, they're not a write off to him. But to you, when you run a podcast, They are a deduction for you. So we have to stop comparing ourselves to everyone else and really, really look at them from our perspective, have our stuff organized and really not fear. Instead, you know, educate ourselves to be able to take what we need to take, utilize the strategies that are out there for us. It's all legal, you know, legal and okay to do. You must have noticed my very fancy uh, Apple headset. So for that, I'm deeply appreciative. And I'm sure my uh, tax advisor will be as well as this uh, goes into one of our deductibles for 2023. Um, What I really loved about what you said, and we'll begin to wrap up at this point, um, is that you can't hand accountability off to someone else. You've got to take accountability. And what I've learned in life, what uh, I've learned as an entrepreneur and being in the corporate world, uh, just as you uh, were, is that partners are really helpful. Um, yes. People uh, uh, who will collaborate with you, who will uh, do more than the busy work, who will strategize with you. And that's a great value that uh, you're bringing in your business. Uh, I so appreciate that. And I encourage, uh, we'll have a lot of ways that in which you can contact uh, Suhe Piedra, uh, in the show notes, but I'd encourage everyone certainly to visit prominencebusiness.com as a first step in getting in touch with uh, Suhe Piedra. And, you know, if you're listening to this during tax season or it's after tax season, it doesn't matter because this right. is a year-round effort. 
Money goes the year round. It doesn't stop. And uh, so no matter when you're listening, if it's in April or if it's in June, this is a great way to think about uh, things. So I'll give one of the last words to you, uh, Suhei Piedra, um, uh, before we just say thank you. No, thank you. And I really do hope we're all, uh, you know, just ready to take over our finances and add them to that goal that we set up for the beginning of the year. If you're listening to it early in the year or later, it's never too late to make those changes as long as we're still within that calendar year. So go out and find those, you know, that team that's going to be rooting for you and helping you find your next million dollar idea. Thank you so much, uh, Suhei Piedra. And again, uh, um, a, a, a little bit different. I think you're the first tax preparer we've had in three years. And, um, and it's really wonderful and it's refreshing and uh, I- encouraging everyone to think about financial well-being. So until the next episode of The People Dividend with Mike Horn, everyone, please stay well. Stay well.